Hello, welcome to Vlogmas special event day three. Today we're giving out free Virgo advice. So I'm gonna open it up to questions. Um, I actually forgot to ask Instagram for questions before. So we're just gonna ask questions on live. And then I'm also gonna go live on TikTok today. Hi. Oh, TikTok live is weird. Um Hi. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention I'm wearing like I never got to wear this after I got it. I got it from YesStyle. It's a carrot slicing my head. Thank you. Okay, I don't know how to use TikTok Live, so I'm just gonna end this one. It's too much. I'm overstimulated. Oops. Oh, wait. Forgot. Yesterday, remember, I forgot to do this. I don't know if you guys remember this from day one, but let's do it. So this is, if you guys haven't been here before, this is the self-love edition of We're Not Really Strangers. It's a card game that um, is meant to like help people open up to each other if you play the original game. This is a self-love edition, which can be used for journal prompts, so. Let's try it. We answered like three of them on the first day, but I completely forgot to do it yesterday because I was in a rush. Also, I didn't know, I don't know if you guys saw, but like on Instagram, um, I posted, yesterday I had to end yesterday's live um, early because I had my first therapy appointment and I got stood up by the new therapist. So maybe it's a sign. <laughs> Um, yeah, the self-love one is really nice if you just want one for yourself. Like, you don't have to play with somebody else because it's kind of, um, it's kind of a lot. Like, the questions are kind of super deep. Okay. Oh, this one's a wild card. Okay, so today's question or prompt is... What are three things I'm most grateful for in this present moment and write them out? So you guys can just type them, I guess. I'm gonna write mine's out. Hmm, three things. What are three things I'm most grateful for in this present moment? Did it focus? the question three things I'm present I'm grateful for mm, having a roof over my head mm, mm, having people who care about me and who I can also care about and
having people around me that cares about me. Honestly, I feel like that's one of the biggest things that you can be grateful for. Like one of the things that you should always remember, especially like having people to care about too. Cause I thought about it recently and I was thinking about like how miserable I would be if I didn't have people I also cared about. Like, I feel like that would be so lonely. to get over guilty feelings what do you mean by guilty feelings like guilty pleasures or like what is the guilt tied to i feel like we need more context on that also my dad got me coffee oh i should have put that for one of the things i'm grateful for he got me a bigger size than i asked for too This is um, a vanilla sweet cream cold brew, but it doesn't taste like it today. So maybe my dad got me something else. Maybe it's just because it's a bigger size. How to stop constantly comparing yourself. Mm, okay, so this one I feel like you know, people always say comparison is the thief of joy and it's really true. So I understand like wanting to change that and but it's like honestly so hard. Um, I don't know. The thing is, I think it comes with like self-love. Like you would have to kind of change the way that you think and rewire your brain to be kind of selfish like think about only yourself um not in a bad way because being selfish isn't always bad usually people think it is i don't agree with that i think being selfish is part of loving yourself so um i guess mainly just thinking of yourself and not always thinking of other people what they have which in part is actually like practicing gratitude. Like if you actually think about, like just sit down and think about for 30 minutes what you have, like what you're grateful for beyond just three things like we did today, like just write down all of the things you're grateful for. You'll realize that you're a lot luckier than you think and it'll make you feel a lot more grateful for what you have, not what you don't have. Yeah, because if you're constantly think of, thinking of what you don't have, yeah, that's like comparing yourself, I guess. <laughs> Guilt towards a breakup that I have initiated and the impacts that were caused on the other individual. Oh, the, this is the guilty feelings question. Guilt towards a breakup that I initiated and the impacts that were caused on the other individual. Oh, hmm. So you're feeling guilty for breaking up with somebody um and how that impacted the other person this one's a little difficult because on one hand like yeah you do care about this person now because you built something with them which is that relationship but i'm assuming that the breakup was because of something that you're doing for yourself like um you need to focus on yourself or something like that then in that way it's like I can understand the guilt because it is probably like difficult what you're going through and what they're going through but at the same time it might be something that's better for both of you in the long run like it's not the right time so yeah it's easy to say but I think it would just take time to heal that that guilt I don't think you should feel guilty about doing something good for yourself though I have watched Wednesday. Um, I haven't finished it yet, so no spoilers, please. But I'm actually 
liking it like i washed it at first but i wasn't really paying attention i didn't like it but i um went to crystal's my friend crystal's place recently and we washed it together and i actually really liked it hmm how do you get over losing your best friend of seven years seven years is a long time um how did are we allowed to know why it ended Do you feel your age? Honestly, I always think I'm older than I am. Like whenever people ask me how old I am, I want to say like 25 or 26. And it's always been this way. Like when I was 17, I always wanted to say I was 22. Um, but I really I don't know why. Like, yeah, I just feel like I'm 25, which isn't too far off. I'm like 23 now, so. The camera I used for this live is linked, I think, or is in the description. It's the Sony ZV-1. Um, let's see. Long distance relationship advice. Ah, oh, I don't think I'm the person to ask because I've never been in one. I know from like people I know who are in long distance relationships is like really, really tough. Yeah. Hair care advice, um, okay. The thing with hair care is my hair health increased, improved so much after I started using hair masks. So if you really want your hair to get healthier, you need to start using masks. I used to be lazy, so I didn't want to use them. So a good gateway into hair masks is the Garnier Fructi Streets one. That one you only have to put on for one minute. So you could technically just use it like a conditioner. Um, so that was like my first hair mask, but after that I started using a leave-in mask, which is the K18 one, which is really good. But yeah, ever since I started using hair masks, my hair has gotten so much smoother. It's just an extra step though, it's really annoying, but it does help a lot. Sorry guys, if you send uh, the questions in multiple messages, it's kind of difficult for me to read. I have a friend who makes me feel unwanted and ignored, so I want to like stop being friends with them, but I want to do it in a nice, not mean way. Any advice? Hmm. Have you talked to them about how they make you feel though? Um, if they're just intentionally doing that to hurt you then I, I mean, I don't see, maybe I'm just petty, but I don't see why you would have to do it in a nice way if they're purposely being mean to you. But um, I would just be very honest about it. I'd be like, hey, like you don't feel like a friend to me. Like the way you treat me doesn't feel like how a friend should sh be treating me. So um, I'd like to stop being friends, please. Yeah, for ending friendships, I've only ever done it. Um, like I've only ever confronted somebody to end a friendship once ever. And I just messaged them and said, hey, like I just, I don't want to be friends anymore. I don't, I feel uncomfortable with the way that 
like whatever that happened and they were just like okay i understand sorry what if you were scared to talk or be really honest with your best friend um Hmm. the thing is with friendships you have to be very you have to be willing to communicate with them for that that relationship to actually be strong for them to be considered your best friend you know like i wouldn't consider somebody you're scared to talk to your best friend um so yeah somebody else said the same thing um how can I get over a crush that led me on then ghosted me? But they're a, they're just a rude and mean person that just wanted attention. Um I don't really have advice on getting over them like I mean it's easier said than done I guess, but um, Yeah, I think you just have to cut off that person completely just yeah i mean they already ghosted you so i guess you have to ghost them back do you ever feel like you're dead on the inside but never want to show it to anyone and actually you're okay i feel like that all the time to each okay this i'm not sure if this is exactly what you mean but i do feel this way a lot and it's mainly associated with like my social battery i don't know if that's what you're talking about but there was like a distinct time that I, my social battery ran out so bad. It had been two days of full, super exhausting social interaction. It was like a music festival, like so many people around. And um, by the end of the second day, I was so tired. I couldn't even fake a smile anymore. And I told my friend, I was like, I'm so sorry. I have to leave like right now. And it kind of sucked because we were there and we really wanted to see the last person that was performing um but i just couldn't do it anymore it's like everybody if this is the feeling that you're talking about it's like you're standing there and it feels like you're um you're an empty husk of yourself like you're just watching everybody around you and it just like feels like you're dissociating yeah um that was like one of the worst experiences for me and it's a big reason why i stopped I, I started saying no to more social hangouts because i was like i never want to feel that way again like you need to really uh protect your own energy and be selective about what events you go to yeah and then also what helps with that is having a safe person who goes to you with places, uh, goes to places with you. So um, like having a friend that you feel really comfortable with that you can go with. So, you know, you can just talk to them and then like whenever you need to, you can be like, hey, sorry, like I really need to go. Um, that's something that I have found is helpful. But on one hand, sometimes I like going to things by myself so I can meet new friends. It's just depending on my social battery, I guess. I use um, I use OBS to live stream. Yeah. My MBTI is INTJ, by the way. What do you do when you're in a bad mood or feel burnt out? Mm, I think in the past, I would try to force myself through it and like uh f like fixate on things like working or whatever that was already harmful to me um like checking social media all the time but the really the only way to deal with that I think is to um 
is to actually take a break from everything. So I recently had a super productive week, like a few months ago, actually, not that recent. Um, but it was a super productive week. I had been socializing every single day that week, like going out, going to events, um, like doing shoots and stuff. And by the end of that week, I was exhausted. So I impulsively booked a trip in Joshua Tree. So it was like completely cut off, like barely used my phone um, and just like relaxed for two days. And that like literally I felt my brain turn off. I feel like that is the best thing you could do for when you feel burnt out. Like just completely cut yourself off. Like don't do whatever it is that that is making you feel bad. Or like if it's socializing, just stop socializing. Like you can just not use your vocal cords for like two days. It's fine. Sometimes I just don't feel like talking, you know, like nobody talked to me. I don't want to have to utter a single word. So yeah. Sometimes I don't even feel like texting people back. It's fine. Um, it's definitely easier for me to talk to people online. I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm kind of more boring in person. What's the advice to not become a workaholic without burnout so you can still be a creator or creative? This one's tough because with creatives, it's kind of inevitable that you burn out. Um, I feel like every single person I know who's a creative has been burnt out before. And the, the, the problem is like, it is almost a catch 22 where as a creative, you're always working. Your mind is always working, it's always on. Like when you do things, automatically your brain is like, oh, maybe I should film this. Like, maybe I should do this. Like, oh, this would be a good idea for a video. And so it's a good thing to always have ideas and always be creative. But at the same time, it's inevitable that you burn out because like if, if you imagine it in the context of like always having a certain job like where you can't differentiate like you can't split your time you know like i've always kind of envied people who can like have real weekends which you know maybe i should like try to figure out a way to do that but yeah if you think about it in that context is like yeah i think the only way you can like sort of mitigate burnout is to try to really set a, a strict schedule for yourself where you you're like okay after this hour i'm not using my phone at all like i'm not looking online for inspiration or anything i'm just gonna like read a book and have like your own form of escapism having hobbies i think that just don't relate to whatever your work or creative is. Do you procrastinate if you do? What do you do to stop it? Um, I do procrastinate, but usually what I find, like really think about what why you're procrastinating. And recently I was thinking about it and it's because I just didn't want to do it. Like um, it's because whatever I was working on, it was something I was not passionate about. So I was like, oh, like trying to push it back. So I recently decided I'm just gonna stop doing those things I'm not passionate about and do the things I actually wanna do. And that's how I don't procrastinate. But that's a little bit different. I don't know about like the context of like in school, like you kind of have to, you have to do it. Um, so in that sense, I think whatever you're doing while you're procrastinating, you need to set a time to actually do those things. So think about it this way, like, what I used to procrastinate on, um, 
this was like something like during my running phase in 2019 is I found that sometimes I would be sitting at my desk and like overthinking and I would just like zone out for like an hour or so and I would just be like thinking about so many things and so what I started doing is once I started like sitting there and like zoning out I stopped myself and I was like okay like keep this in the back of your mind and when you go to the gym you can think about that and it actually really helped me what I would do is like it would help me because I would feel like okay I do have the time to think about this later or whatever you're doing you want to do during that time you're procrastinating and so it made me more productive because in that time I was sitting down and doing my work and then at the gym I would have all that time to overthink and think about all the things I need to plan and you know turn on my brain a little bit so yeah whatever you're procrastinating on like maybe you're using your phone maybe you're like procrastinating so you're reading a book just set a time so you know that you have that time to actually do it so you're not like completely ignoring your duties What's your advice for someone who wants to start YouTube? As a fellow perfectionist, I'm struggling to start since I tend to over-identify with everything that I make and end up achieving it. Um, okay, so with YouTube, a lot of people will tell you this, that you just need to do it. And it's true, it's true. But I actually, for me, I was also kind of in the same position as you were where it actually took me a year to start my channel after I um, decided I was making one. And in that year, I researched a lot on how to start a YouTube channel and I watched a lot of videos. And I, during that whole year, it was like researching to start my own channel. So I think set a date for yourself, like set that time to do your research so you feel fully comfortable with what you're gonna present. And then once you get to that date, upload it no matter what, because that's the only thing that differentiates you from other people who are possibly going to do the same thing as you and yourself is like whether you actually do it or not. Yeah, there are a lot of like, I've seen a lot of, um, like I've had a friend who she was, she told me that she was getting hate because people were like, oh, I could have totally done what you did. And I was like, yeah but they didn't so why are they hating on you for being able to actually do it like you are the one who ended up actually uploading your video so yeah they're just bitter if you're procrastinating with homework i recommend listening to brown noise it works so well to cancel out thoughts. I totally agree because I can't work in silence and I do think brown noise is super helpful. I also like listening to it to go to sleep sometimes. Have you ever felt peer pressure before and how do you overcome it? Honestly, I think the last time I felt peer pressured in anything was in high school. Um, it's kind of hard to peer pressure me into anything now because I'm very like particular and adamant about things. So I think the only time I felt peer pressured was because I was insecure about how other people would perceive me and be like oh my god like she's so boring like why can't she do this um i don't care anymore like yeah i'm boring so don't like people know not to even try to convince me anymore because it's just going to be a waste of breath um yeah i think just being the way to overcome it honestly is just to like eventually people will stop telling you, asking you to do things because they'll realize that your answer is set and you're not gonna change it. Thank you.
tips to get you in the mood to be productive. Okay. For something that's helped me a lot is I saw this TikTok of this girl. I forgot her name, but she's Asian and she has like curly hair is like to here. I don't know if you guys have seen her, um, but she does a lot of like life coaching advice videos and I saw this video of hers that popped up on my for you page on this day that I was feeling a particularly unmotivated. I was, it was like 12 PM and I hadn't got out of bed yet. And in her video, she was like, if, if you're feeling unmotivated to do something, think about what the ideal version of yourself would do. And that's something that kind of stuck with me. Um, because truthfully, like we all have a person that we would want to be like like you've always seen people online of like oh like i wish i could be like them and you totally can like there is if you think about yourself in an, uh, a glorified way right like think about who you ideally want to be and then just become that person like take the steps to become that person because you that is you like it's just the perfect version of yourself so if you think like oh the ideal version of myself wakes up at 5 a.m every day then just start waking up at 5 a.m every day and then you're closer to becoming who that ideal version of yourself that's something that always motivates me when i'm feeling like unmotivated is i think of like oh, the ideal version of jesse she would have she would wake up at this time she would like do her makeup at this time and get ready for the day at this time and it always makes me feel really good after like reflecting on my day because then i'm like wow like that was an ideal jesse day it's also like something i was um thinking about when I had a friend who told me like, oh, I wish I could do this like you or like act like this like you or like be this way. And I was like, you literally can. Like what would, what's stopping you? It's only whether you do it or not. And that's within your control, so. On TikTok, do you ever feel drained and how to stop endlessly scrolling? I do. Um, it's kind of bad because like sometimes I do keep scrolling. Um, but another way to do that is like what I said earlier, like you could literally be like, if you are procrastinating and in that time you're scrolling, just set aside a time to do it. Like be like, okay, from, um, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., all a lot that time for TikTok, so I can just scroll from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So you're like, I know that I have that hour to do it, so I don't mindlessly end up scrolling for three hours. And then also, like, one thing I saw recently, like, was I saw a girl at the gym and she was just scrolling through TikTok. And honestly, I feel like that's such a good idea because it makes the time pass so much faster. So you could do that too. Um, the blush I'm wearing is from ColourPop, it's the floating lights one from their collab with Disney. I don't know if, I think it was limited edition, so I don't know if they have it anymore. Do you have any tips on getting better with conflict avoidance? I'm so scared of getting hurt. I just withdraw from everyone at the first sign something is wrong. Hmm. I think it depends on, for me personally, it depends on my relationship with whoever it is. Because sometimes, sometimes I'm like, it, and it depends on what they did wrong. So sometimes if it's something that I think is completely wrong, and I'm not that close with them. And I, I just feel like they're not a good person. Whatever they did <clears throat> shows to me that they're not a good person. I um, 
I'll just completely cut them off because I feel like it's not a relationship worth salvaging. <coughs> but if it's a person that I'm close to and I feel like this is a, could be a miscommunication or something, then I will always upfront like ask them and try to communicate to tell them like at least how I'm feeling so that they know why I'm ending the relationship or like work it out with them. Um, I think like it's valid that you're afraid of getting hurt and you want to withdraw, but that can sometimes harm your relationships that could be good relationships in your life. So um, it's important to know like sometimes you need to work through tough situations to make relationships better. Because there are some friends that I have almost ended the friendships with them who are like very important people to me. But like there are some miscommunications and things that we like, we needed to talk about. I cut off my best friend a few weeks ago because he was treating me so badly, but I feel like I should have at least tried to work it out. Mm, I don't know. It's That one's kind of tough because if he's treating you so badly, maybe it's not worth trying to work it out because there are some things that you shouldn't have to tell people um, like how to treat you. Like if they're being terrible to you, then they're even though that's a friend that you consider your best friend, maybe they're just not a good person. Oh, also, are you guys proud of me for not doing winged liner today? I've been really into like doing a full beat without um, any eye makeup. I don't know. I feel like it's like, it's like matte skin, lots of blush, no eye makeup. Something about it looks so cute. I still like winged liner a lot though. What advice would you give to your younger self? I think I would tell myself not to let other people's perceptions of me define me because um, I think I used to have more of an external locus of control where I felt like everything in the world was happening to me and I didn't have much control. And now I'm a control freak. So I genuinely believe that whatever I think about is what is true. Like, I define myself as a being, so what does it matter what a few people perceive of me? Yeah, I feel like a lot of unhappiness for me in, like when I was younger was caused by how I felt other people were thinking of me. Or like a lot of anxiety was caused by that too. So it's also another reason why I, I took the year before I started YouTube, which isn't like a bad thing that I was doing all that research, but I was really afraid of how people would receive that. Hi Jessica, in the past when people from two of my friend groups became friends, they ended up kicking me out of the group and now I sense it happening again with my new friends. Any advice? Um, two of my friend groups became friends. Oh, so like you introduce these two people, I'm assuming, and then they're becoming closer and 
hang out without you? Hmm. I think for this one, I would just have a conversation with them where I'd be like, I, I would try to initiate more hangouts with them first. And then I would also be like, have an honest conversation with them where it's like, hey, like, I f this is how I feel like, you know, it's, it's a communication thing because it could be a misunderstanding um, or it could be true like that that they're I don't think it's trying to kick you out though I think maybe they just like each other a lot and they're getting closer but yeah I think for something like that maybe maybe it's because one of them is initiating these hangouts so like maybe if you want to hang out with them more or like one or the other one-on-one -on -one, maybe you need to be initiating the hangouts honestly friendships take a lot of work so you can't always rely on the other person to be like hey let's do this you know Is there any language that you want to learn recently? Okay, for this one, I've actually been wanting to learn Japanese recently because I'm going to Japan in February and I feel like I want to know at least some of it. Yeah. So I'm trying to learn a little bit. The problem is I always watch anime dubbed, so it's a little bit harder. So I need to start watching it subbed because I actually, like when I was watching K-dramas a lot, I actually learned a lot of Korean and now I can actually understand a lot of it um, without subtitles. So I think I just need to consume more media without dub. Hmm. Can you do a tutorial on the makeup you're wearing today? This honestly is like the makeup that I do in every video. It's just no no eye makeup. So just skip the eye part and then do the base. But yeah, maybe I will do a tutorial. I feel like it's almost when you don't wear any eye makeup it looks like you're, it's like the no makeup makeup look. It's only like if I didn't do matte skin and I did dewy skin and then like maybe just gloss, no lipstick. I think honestly, I'm pretty good at learning languages, um, but it's also because I grew up knowing Vietnamese and I feel like if you grow up with a tonal language like Vietnamese or um, Mandarin like where it's like tonal where you have to do like up and down and like there are certain sounds that you have to make that aren't common in other languages it's so much easier to pick up other languages like in Vietnamese like there's like the um, NG thing like Nguyen, the last name, a lot of people can't pronounce that, but because I'm Vietnamese and I grew up, like I know how to do the ng, the ng sound that a lot of people can't, and then I can do the up and down. So I think it would be really easy for me to learn other languages because I already know how to make the sounds. Do you know what I mean? If you grew up only knowing English, it's a lot harder to learn those because you your brain doesn't automatically know that it's supposed to be an ng, like, like the end of ing is like, a lot of people are like, no, Nguyen. Do you watch any Twitch streamers? If so, who's your favorite? I don't. Well, actually, I watch my friend Crystal, Christo, but um, I don't know if she streams anymore. But if she does, you guys should go watch her. She does like drawing drawing streams she also has a store called studio cristo 
where she sells like cute keychains and stickers. And she does a lot of Studio Ghibli stuff, so you got, if you guys like that, you should watch, er, go to her website. Have you tried Rare Beauty, Rare Beauty makeup thoughts? I actually have not, but they just reached out to me and they're sending me a package, so I'm gonna do um, maybe a TikTok review. I don't know. I've seen a lot about their blush, so... Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Hi, Jessica. I barely use makeup nowadays because of my skin and I feel like my skin is really bad. Whenever I put on foundation, how do I be content with the condition of my skin? Hmm. So honestly, for me, I feel like when I wear makeup, my skin like even without makeup, it looks better because I take care of my skin more. Like every day when I remove my makeup, I have to do the oil cleansing, I have to do the double cleansing and all of that. So I actually treat my skin better than when I don't wear makeup. Um, but even if you don't wear makeup, you don't have to like, you don't have to wear makeup to do all of that. It's just that I'm very particular about my makeup removal process. Um, it depends on what struggle you're having with your skin if it's like an issue with like maybe your skin is reacting to a certain product or um if you're dealing with hormonal acne it depends really on the what's happening with your skin unbox pr practice live i could do that right now i actually have three huge boxes that i have been um neglecting in the corner of my room but i don't know if that's like kind of boring like just unboxing stuff oh you guys want to see it okay let me go grab them rug because my I have a I have a white rug so I don't want to like make it dirty with the boxes one second I'm gonna lay down some paper towels maybe I should lay down a blanket in the other room but wait actually you know what i need to run downstairs for a second to grab the other stuff i'll be right back one second
There's a lot. Okay, let me. The scissors. I just need to be careful not to show my address. Oh, I'm out of breath from running downstairs. Okay, so our first package is from Florisys, which you guys know I freaking love. Um, they do all of those really pretty engraved makeup. If you guys have seen, I've done like a few videos with them. I'm out of breath. I feel like the camera is off, like it's an off center. Ah. Okay, I don't want it to fall. look okay what is this it's like fabric oh it's a bag wow it's so pretty it's lined in the inside with silk oh it's so pretty it's like um it's a tote bag this is so pretty it's like the tool like reflective oh my god i'm just throwing trash everywhere so this is the i'm assuming this is their holidays collection so pretty i wish i could show it oh. here let me just hold it up let's see um i'm wondering if this is oh this is an envelope up here i take it out ah. Hi Jessica, thank you so much for your support of Florisys in the past year. This is our special PR gift. The shades of the lipsticks from the elegant eastern colors match a variety of looks from vintage to gentle and charming. Hope you enjoy it. Many loves from the Florisys team. What's this? Cards. So pretty. I think this is for each of the collection or the pieces in the collection. Each lipstick. Ah. Let's look at them. Their lipsticks are always so pretty. All of their lip products have been so good. Even the lip glosses. I'm shaking because I had coffee. So I can't get this thing back on. Okay. I think this is a new addition to their glosses. Oops, some of them fell out. Let's see. Should I do a swatch? Oh, this is the black one. Never mind. Um, or the green one. Let's see. Mm -hmm. What color should I do? Look at this down here, the the bottom. Which color? This one. This one. The brown one's kind of cute, but I don't know if it matches today's look. Yes, this is Florisys. I believe this is a new- Oh, there's a little compartment down here. What is this? Is it a necktie? Neck scarf? Let's try this one. Oh yeah, everybody's saying number three. Okay, so I'm grabbing number three. Is this a gloss? It's a different component from their, like the other one was white. I think maybe this for the holidays is green. 
Mm, it looks similar to the color. Um, wait, this one has more pigment than the gloss. I wish I had a mirror. Where's my mirror? I look funny with this scarf, but <laughs> let me take it off. This one's a little bit more matte. It's an actual liquid lipstick. It's kind of bright. Whoa, it's really bright. Yeah, this one's matte, so it's not a gloss. Interesting, interesting. I kind of want to try one of the reds now. Let's try a red. do red lips okay next we have a package from don't know who let's open it and see try not to slice a finger off Where's my box cutter? thing I didn't cut just the tape I cut the entire box okay wait we got it Let's see what this oh NARS it looks like a holiday collection because it has stars on the box I love how this went from an advice column to just a PR unboxing. I didn't know if this is something you guys were interested in though. <gasps> Pretty. Get Starstruck, the holiday collection. Iconic shades, best-selling formulas, starring NARS. It's your turn to roleplay with a limited edition collection featuring our most coveted shades and formulas and exclusive star studded packaging. Reach for the stars, fall into the world of NARS. Available now. Are you impressed with how fast I can read? I'm Trisha Paytas. Oh wow, it's so pretty. So in this collection, it looks like there's, this is a mini face set. Ah, I see. So this is, these would be really good gifts because it's like um, like mini sets. So in this, there's a blush, a setting face powder, and a lipstick. You can see what some that was in there in here. So I'm assuming this is like a travel kit. I used to love going to Sephora or not Sephora Ulta before um, 
like during the holidays when they have all these little gift sets. Look how cute. So this is the blush. It's like a rosy, dusty rose tone. This is the translucent powder. Pretty. And then the lipstick. mini lipstick so like a a peachy nude like a dusty peach nude like an orange tone nude so that's the first thing in here second thing is a blush so I yeah this is a full-size blush it's in the shade orgasm oh this is their their most popular one but I'm assuming maybe it's in a different type of packaging for the holidays. Well, maybe just the outside packaging is the stars. <gasps> Wait, no, it is. It's the star packaging. It's so pretty. This is such a pretty shade. This is shimmery though. It has like those little gold um, specks. So. Maybe I will do a giveaway with this. Next is, oh, this is a full size of the translucent powder, which is the thing that I just showed you. Um, but it's just a bigger size and then it's in the star packaging. I won't open that. This is Kiss the Stars Matte Lip Duo. So I used to love this lip crayon until I ran out of it but um so it looks like this is just a matte the matte crayon and then the crayon if you guys have ever tried this it's um it's just a super matte lip crayon and then this is the air matte lip color this packaging so cute I love it. So unique. All right. Behave Backstage Cheek Set. Oh, so this is another gift set. Oh. So it comes with a a liquid blush, a powder blush, and a cream blush. So it looks like that. Just the the travel size version of each. The liquid blush, I've never tried that one. Let's open it and see. It looks like a nail polish, so cute. This is so cute. This is a liquid blush. It looks like it's reflective though. So like the or, uh, the orgasm shade. And then this is the cream blush. I used to hate cream blushes, but I actually like them now. And then this is another mini of the blush but it's in the shade Behave, which is like a muted nude. Oh, this, these are so cute. Okay, next. I feel like we're taking a long time to go through this, um, but they sent a lot of stuff. Next is another gift set. It comes with a lip, like one of their glowy lipsticks, which actually doesn't have any pigment. This is just a glowy like lip oil in a lipstick form. And then a blush and a cream blush. I'm not gonna open that. Yeah, the NARS lip crayons, I feel like they are super drying, but they're really good, like a good hybrid of um, a lip liner and a lipstick. So I feel like they're good for contouring your lips. Stargaze eyeshadow palette. Ooh, this one's really pretty. I used to be obsessed with like 
red eyeshadows. Let's open this. I'll show you what it looks like. Are we all Virgos here? so pretty pretty do you guys like more matte or more glittery or more shimmery eyeshadows i usually prefer in my palettes i usually prefer mostly matte shades and then maybe two glitters i don't like shimmers i feel like american eyeshadow palettes usually have too many shimmers Okay, next is Rising Star Cheek Palette. So this is blush, I'm assuming. Ooh. Wow, this has like the stars uh, engraved. This would be a really nice gift. It has an orange blush too, which is really, usually not very common so i love orange blushes that would be a good gift and then what are these shine on mini dolce vita lip duo oh so it's like an ornament of the lip crayon and then the liquid lipstick and then this is a translucent crystal so Translucent powder with a little powder puff ornament. So cute. I haven't done any Christmas shopping yet. Kind of behind. Oh, and then there's one last explicit content Climax Mascara Duo. So, this is the mascara. And that's all from NARS. Thank you, Naras. This was such a generous gift. I don't know how they touch this, this together. Whoa, wait, this lipstick? Let's see the lasting power. It got on the cup, but it didn't move. I'm amazed. Oh my God, this next one, I'm so excited for. Okay, so. If you guys have seen, oh, the lipstick is from Florisys. It's their new matte lipstick, liquid lipsticks. Um, if you guys have seen this, it's been all over. Like, I've seen it on Instagram, actually. And so this is a small ceramics shop that I've, I've seen um, that creates, like, little mugs that look grumpy. So it's run by this girl who does, um, like, pottery. Oh, oops, I broke the box again. And she reached out and sent me a cup. It's called Grumpy Kid Studios. The cups, their mugs are kind of expensive, but it's because like she put so much work into them and you can't expect a mug to be, um, like you can't expect the price to be super cheap when it's something like such good quality 
and like it, it's a small artist. So this would also be a really good gift to give if you have people who like cute things or a friend who has an RBF. Oh my God, I was just... This is so cute. I was just looking at this on their website. Where should I put all my trash? This is so cute, look at this mug. So that's the like grumpy face. All of the mugs have this. And then it's like, it has like, um, like an irregular shape. Like you can see the top is like, it's not completely flat. It's like a little imperfect, which I love because it's like um, unique. It's like you can tell it was like handmade. And then she just drew little doodles around it for the holidays. Ah, I love it. And there's a little sparkle on the inside. Isn't it so cute? Oh my gosh, I can't wait to make hot chocolate in this. Thank you. Thank you, Grumpy Kid Studios. This is so cute. Lashify. Lashify, Lashify. Why am I so bad at opening boxes? What is this? Oh wait, I wasn't supposed to do it that way. It was a pool tab. It's like this. Yep. Okay. So this is what Lashify sent. I think this is their lash extension kit, which I have been wanting to try because you guys know that I usually apply my lashes underneath the lash line to make it look more natural. And they have a whole kit for that. It's like lash extensions that last a week, so. It looks like this is a lot of stuff. I don't know how to use, but what's this? Oh. Attention, this bag is not a toy to avoid suffocation. Please keep out of the reach of the babies and children. So is this like, is this just packing material? Ah. I feel like there's something inside of here though. Oh, it's a bag. See, I knew it wasn't trash. I knew it wasn't trash. It's a tote bag. Cute. And then let's make sure there's nothing left. There's this, a squeezy bottle. This looks like, all of this is just like lash extension materials. So I'm assuming these are tweezers. And then inside is, um, 
this poly instructions and then all of the lash materials i'll do i'll, I'll try it off camera and then show you guys once i realize how to use it yeah thank you lashify mini lash pad I need to look up how to use it. Let's put everything in the tote bag. Okay, next is from Velvet Caviar. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so excited about this. This is their collab with Bratz. Girls with a passion for fashion meet the phone case with a passion for protection. Bratz and Velvet Caviar have come together for a collab that will get your phone looking super styling. Chloe, Sasha, Yasmin, and Jade are always unapologetically themselves and remind us that friendship comes first. We hope the Scorch and Cl Capsule collection inspires you to express yourself. Yeah. Jessica Hey doll, time to take your passion for fashion to the next level. Bratz ex Velvet Caviar has been a dream come true for us and we are so excited to finally share it with the Bratz pack. We hope these cases and accessories inspire you to express yourself. Cute. Um. set of mini brats flashback minis what's that is it a doll i can't see what's inside does anybody know what the mini brats flashback minis are I'm curious which doll line did you like more, Bratz, Barbie, or Monster High? Personally, I really like Monster High because I like more edgy fashion. Honestly, I don't think I was young enough to know about Monster High because that came a little later. I actually really liked my scene, which was, um, it was made by Mattel, which, is, which owns Barbie, and it came after Bratz. It was like their way, they wanted to be like Bratz, like create a Bratz line because that's when um, Bratz became super popular and I think it became more popular than Barbie. So they came out with something like trying to make it more diverse and like with a friend group like Bratz, but it wasn't as successful. But I really liked my scene. Um, these are so cute. It's like little retro, retro phone cases. And then this one has all of their logos because you know, like they each had um, like one frog and then the angel wings. So pretty. And then their eyes on butterflies. You can see the brat's eyes. And then this one. Oh, and also some phone grips. So pretty. Put that there for now. And. 
Next. Um, this next one I actually already opened and I left it over there. So let me grab it. Came in here. Actually, let's take all of this out. I got a bunch of things from Yes Style, by the way. So it's like a bunch of skincare stuff. Cosrx, my mom loves this stuff, the Ultimate Nourishing Rice Mask. And then, obviously, my favorite sunscreen. Um, although recently, I've been really liking the beauty of Joseon one and the Isn't Tree ones. So. Contact lenses. Anyway, Prada sent me their Paradox perfume. So, Paradox. Um, this scent, it smells... Wait, what is this? A refill? I've been loving brands that have been doing this recently. The refills. So they send, or you can get the, um, the regular perfume. This is so pretty, by the way. Like, this is such a unique packaging. It's so true to their brand. Um, and then you can get a refill, which lasts, like, it's the same amount as two full bottles. So you can just fill it after. Um, I saw Giorgio Armani did that, and then this is my second time seeing it with Prada, which I don't know if it's been a thing, but this is my first time seeing it. Um, this perfume, it smells very bittersweet in my opinion. Um, it's very sweet when, when you first smell it, and then it gets more bitter. And it lasts really long too. I recently sprayed it. And it lasted a really long time. Mmm. It has like a lychee cherry type of scent. And then... It's like initially very sweet. It smells like candy. But then as it wears, you get... You start to smell more of like a grapefruit type of scent. Yeah, this is like, this smells so good. If you like sweet scents, then you'll really like it. And it has a hint of uh, citrus too. Oh, we have Cosrx fans in here. Yeah, no, I freaking love Cosrx, especially their hyaluronic acid um, intensive cream. That stuff literally made my skin so smooth. It smells so good. Okay, um, next, let's move some of these boxes. There's so much trash here, sorry. Uh, okay. Next, we have a huge package from Oh yeah, the snail mucin line from Cosrx is so good. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Cosrx is just, every single thing that they've come out with is just so good. Anyway, Beauty of Joseon, also another really great skincare brand. They sent this gift, which I don't know what is in it. Ah, let's see if I can hold this up. Oh, it's an advent calendar. I should have opened it earlier. One second. It's very heavy. Dear Jesse, this year, do you want to read it with me? This year, Beauty of Joseon has received a lot of support and love from our dear customers. We are not a brand that pursues only external beauty. We hope that our slogan of beauty and relief has reached you with its intended meaning. Our ultimate goal is to let you feel our value of relief the moment you use our products and the instant you think of the brand Beauty of Joseon. We also hope that the, those moments accumulate over time and bring your relief daily you relief daily. We will continue to strive to walk alongside you on your journey through life through our visible and invisible actions. This advent calendar contains our sincere gratitude to all of you who have supported us, the joy of the present moment that we can share with you, and the excitement of the future we will be sharing together. Please accept the caring messages from those who make you <laughs> just along with the gifts we have prepared for you. With love, Team BOJ. I'm laughing because like I remember this time when I was like, I was trying to talk really fast during um, an outro that I was filming with my mom and she was like why do you need to be talking so fast just slow down and you'll stop stuttering 
yeah, I don't know why I always feel the need to talk super fast. Like it was like, I was like, thank you so much for watching, uh, whatever. And my mom was like judging me so hard. Anyway, um, this is the advent calendar. Ooh, it's super heavy. Let's open up day one. I wish I could, here, let me try. I just don't want to drop it. You know what, I don't, why am I even holding it up? Okay, never mind. Guess what it is? I'm guessing it's the sunscreen. I'm right. Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics. Okay, this sunscreen is so good. It is a chemical sunscreen, but I think it's good for sensitive skin because I use it and it doesn't break me out. I've been seeing so much about this on TikTok because the thing with this sunscreen is it doesn't make your makeup separate. I guess it depends on what type of foundation you're using, but a lot of people love this because it absorbs into the skin and it doesn't make your makeup peel a lot of, or pill. A lot of um, sunscreens do that, but this one doesn't, so. Yeah. Back into the advent calendar you go. Should we open up day two? Let's open it. So this is day two. I'm guessing this is a serum. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, it's a perfume. I didn't know Beauty of Justin had perfumes. We wanted to deliver a fragrance that embodies Beauty of Josun's identity. There are so many different perfumes available, but most of them are from famous brands or imitation products. There was no scent that could possibly express us. Therefore, we created Pine Grove Eau de Parf Parfum with everyone on the team who knows the beauty, the brand. Okay, why am I reading? Let's just smell it. <laughs> I can't tell if I'm smelling the... It's the Prada one that's messing me up. Okay, let's just spray it on this side. Oh, oh my God. Wait, you guys need to smell this. Like go out and see if like, I don't know if they have this in stores. Oh my God, that smells so good. It's like, um, okay. I don't know if this will make sense to you guys, but it smells like a hotel. It smells like a fresh hotel that's like, oh my God, it smells so good. It's called Pine Grove. And you can definitely smell it. It's like a woody, like a foresty type of scent, but very fresh. I've never smelled anything like this before. It smells like almost like um, a tea type of fragrance too. Like I, I can sense the smell of, of pine and tea. Oh my God, this smells so good. Yeah, oh wow, that smells so good. Okay, next. This might be my new signature fragrance. I wonder how long it lasts though, we'll see. Should I open up day three? You want me to spray it again? Okay. I'll spray it in your direction this time so you can smell it. I'm just trying not to get it on the screen. Smell it. Wait, it has that scent of like, okay, if you guys know Tiger Balm or um, Yosan the, in Vietnamese, the um, Yosan, the, the thing that you use for um, the coin rubbing thing. Or like when you're sick and you you put it on your neck and stuff, suk yo san, you know? It, like upon first smelling it, it has a, a little bit of that like, that scent, but oh my God, it smells so good. I can't get over it. Mmm. I feel like um, it's a very sophisticated scent. Okay, day three. I can't, like I feel like this advent calendar is so good. It's really stuck in there. Let's take out day two. Okay. Day three. 
red bean water gel. Red bean extract water gel. Is that a cleanser? I haven't tried this yet. It's okay. So this is like, it's a fresh earthy scent. I wouldn't say it's like exactly like uh, woody because, because it doesn't have that like musky type of scent to it. It's like slightly musky, but not very, I don't know. I don't know if everybody would like this, but I feel like it's a unisex scent and it's like, it smells comforting to me. It's unique in the sense that I feel like if you like um, Glossier's U, you know that one a lot of people have mixed opinions on. If you like, if you like Glossier U, I think you'd like this one. Cause it's like a unique comforting scent that smells like, I feel like it smells like a library too. Like it smells like a, a comfort book. Or something oh, so good okay should we open day four too late I'm opening it already red bean refreshing pore mask can't wait to try all of these okay and then day five Five is down here. Five is huge. Is today the fifth? Today's the sixth, so we can open up six of these. Pine Grove Body Cream. Is this the same scent as the fragrance? light or maybe because I have so many perfumes around me right now it is mmm smells so good I think the perfume smells better though because it's a little stronger this is a little lighter version it smells so good oops I got lipstick on it wow I'm obsessed with the pine grove scent It smells like Christmas. It's because of the pine smell. But it's because like, um. Mm, yeah, it smells like Christmas. Pine Grove Body Wash. Oh my God. This is the body wash. If you guys are able to, I don't know where they sell Beauty of Jason, like maybe Sephora. You guys are able to go smell the the pine grove scent. You might hate it. You might love it. I don't know. I feel like I feel like um, if you like uh, super sweet scents, you might not like it. Okay, that's all we can open for today, guys, because it's only the sixth. Wait, there's only twelve things. Was I not supposed to start opening these? I don't know. Whatever. That is the advent calendar. <gasps> Super heavy. I wonder... The lip color I'm wearing is... Let me check. Where's the beauty of just something? Or the floors is... I lost it. Oh wait. It is Floris's shade M140. Looks like this. It's new, new liquid lipstick, matte. Whew, what a workout. That was difficult. Okay. Next. 
Um, I think this was a collab. Yeah. So, Zit Sticker, I think they collabed with I Do Care. So, Zit Sticker came out with Cushion Cleanse Balancing Facial Cleanser for Acne Prone Skin. Zit Sticker, um, they're usually known for their acne stickers. So, um, yeah, if you like those, you might like this. Um, they're also known for their Skin Discipline Pills, which I've heard are really great. I like their acne stickers, which is like they have little spikes on them. So if you're getting a pimple, you just stick it on and then it'll kill it. Um, and then it came with this. I think this is a towel. Face towel. And then um, headband. What is this? Travel skincare, travel, travel skincare bottle, and then uh, I do cares scoop squad. Actually, I don't know if this was a collab or if I just put them in the same box, but yeah, this is the scoop squad ice cream wash off masks and silicone brush set. This is, this brand has really cute branding and packaging. It's called I do care, and they always do like, see look look at all the details. It's so cute. But yeah, in here it comes with a bunch of different masks and they look like this. Like they are in little tubs and then they're like blue and pink. Really cute. I don't usually use masks like wash off masks um, cause I feel like they dry out my skin too much. But, oh wait, there's a hydrating version, the Cake My Day. Yeah, maybe I'll use that one. Cause I don't like the ones that are like, I, I used to use the Innisfree um, volcanic pore clay mask a lot but i think my skin's changing as i'm getting older so my skin's too dry for that now but i think like once a month you could use that if you your pores are clogged and then i have the kaja all my heart heart inspired eye lip eye and cheek trio i love kaja their branding's also super cute and this set would be also a really good gift yeah, I specifically, okay, I like all of their stuff, you know, but I really like these, oop, these two. This is really good, but I don't like the, um, I feel like the stamp doesn't really work that well. Um, but this, I really like, like the moussey type of lip, lip products. And then the, the Beauty Bento eyeshadow trios, those are like my favorite. They're so good and really good for traveling too. Yeah, the Beauty Bento eyeshadow trios. Um, genius. I think they're like one of the best products ever invented. Okay, next. Next. Let me try to clean up a little bit. Ugh. Um. Wait, ask about what my hair. Sorry, I missed the question. Oh, what do you use on it? Um, so right now, the main thing that I think is making my hair like very hydrated is the K18 hair mask. That stuff is really good. Like everybody I've spoken to, even people with color treated hair say that it's really good. Um, you just put it on while your hair is wet straight out of the shower you just leave it in and after it dries down your hair will feel super silky smooth okay next i have the smashbox x becca collab if you guys know becca actually went out of business earlier this year or last year um and i feel like a lot of things contributed to it but mainly i feel like their brand was only really big because of their jaclyn hill collab so yeah um, but they went out of business, but they were really known for their Skin Perfector highlighters. So they did a collab with Smashbox and I guess like they just did a collab to try to get rid of inventory. Um, and so if you want, I don't know if this is still available, but if you want the, to stock up on your Becca highlighters, 
this is a good time to do it because after this you're probably never going to get it ever again um but yeah these are their highlighters they were super popular back in like 2017 Um, it's not the exact same. Hmm. I think it is. I I mean, I used to have the Champagne Pop one from Jaclyn Hills Club. I bought that one and I feel like it's pretty similar. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'll probably be doing a giveaway with these two because I don't really use these highlighters anymore. I got also brushes from ColourPop. I love ColourPop brushes. And then Smashbox Halo Plumping Dew Hyaluronic Acid Illuminating Moisturizer. I think that's a primer moisturizer type of thing. And then First Aid Beauty. Wait, let me go through all the Smashbox first. I unboxed a lot of things and put them in the same box so that it would be easier. The clap's not permanent, or the clap's permanent? Oh, maybe they sold it to Smashbox. Like maybe, I don't know. If it's permanent, that's nice, yeah. Um, okay, so next is also the Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer. I haven't tried this, it has SPF 25. Not enough SPF in my opinion, but you know, SPF and makeup is such a gimmick. It's like not really, it's not enough SPF to even consider it worthy. If anything, you should always be wearing sunscreen. Um, okay, next. Okay, I bought this, the Stay Golden Cosmetics Glitter Lip Kit, and I haven't figured out how to actually properly use it. I tried it once and it did not look good, so I'm gonna try it again. But if you guys have seen on TikTok, th this went viral for, um, it's like when people use flash and then it's like super glittery lips. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to use it, so. <clears throat> um, next is the La Palette Vis Visage from, I forgot what brand this was. It's a, a French brand, I believe. Why don't they have any brand on it? It just says an R. Anyway, this is what it looks like. Let me, if I can find out what brand it is, and I'll link it. Kaleidos, I always love Kaleidos. They have really great glitters and highlighters, and I've been into their um, contour palettes recently. Yeah, this is one of the contour palettes. These are really good because they have the perfect, oh no, I took it out a chunk. Um, they have like the perfect contour shade. Look at how gray, gray brown this is. Becca and Smashbox are both under Estee Lauder, so they moved all of Becca's more popular products to Smashbox. Honestly, that's super smart. Cause I, mm, I'm kind of sad that they didn't bring back the, the liquid highlighters because I really liked that for contouring my nose. Mm. Eh, whatever. Um, okay, and then the next, next is, First Aid Beauty's Vitamin C Brightening Serum. I love First Aid Beauty. I remember when I was breaking out after I moved to California, their, their moisturizers really helped me because it was like really good for sensitive skin. Mm. Okay, and the rest is from Flora Flower Nose. Yesterday I talked about Flower Nose, but I love their makeup. Look, look how pretty the packaging is. It's all super intricate and just so pretty in general. Look at this. 
swatch. Oops, can't really see. That's the pink, dusty pink shade, um, which is number three in the blush. But yeah, their makeup is just so pretty. So I actually was waiting to do an unboxing, but I'll just unbox it now. Um, this is the Flower Nose Strawberry Rose Cocoa Series 5 Color Eyeshadow Palette. Look how pretty this is. pretty oh my god it's so pretty I feel like the colors aren't that great and not very inclusive maybe in the other palettes wait I want to swatch the shimmer real quick this is the shimmer um, the, ooh, it's pretty glittery. The quality of this kind of reminds me of Can Make. Um, honestly, I think the product is like probably, the most of it is in the packaging. The, the quality of the products, they're not like that pigmented. I feel like they're kind of chalky from the two things I've opened. But let's see if they have any more inclusive eyeshadow colors. Because that one I feel like would only show up on super pale skin, the one that I just opened. I can't open this. <gasps> Where are my tweezers? Let's open the next palette, which is the blue one. I still need to do my nails. Should we do nail stream tomorrow? Yeah, I haven't seen Flower Nose on any darker skin either, and I haven't seen them gift it to any darker skin creators which probably means that they don't have, um, like they're not very inclusive, but I do know it's an Asian brand, like it's based in Asia. So maybe that's why, like, you know how K-Beauty usually, it, they only have like two foundation shades. Yeah. I'm sure as they like globalize, their brand they they'll come out with more stuff but this brand also came up super fast like it went viral and i think like they they weren't expecting it to blow up the way it did so hopefully they'll come out with with more shades This is the blue palette. Wow, oh, so pretty. Yeah, this is also not very inclusive. They're just like pastel-y shades. But this is also very pretty. Let me swatch this blue. Ooh, pretty pigmented. Like, still super pastel. If you like pastels, then these would be great palettes. They just came out with a chocolate collection, or like are about to, so maybe there will be darker shades for that collection. And there's one last darker palette, so maybe this one will also have darker shades.
my god, I've been opening these wrong. They have like the easy opening like pull string tab thing. See, this is why I'm like, I'm terrible at opening boxes. It's just not. Okay, this is the last eyeshadow palette from their Strawberry Red Cocoa collection. This one's the burgundy one. <gasps> Pretty. And this one is just all browns. But even this, I don't think, like this darkest brown isn't even that dark. So yeah. Pretty, this palette is so pretty. Look at the mirror. It has like the little, so pretty. Ah, I love it. And then they also sent me their lip creams. I'm getting like this static -y thing. The cream and then unicorn lip gloss. I want to try the lip gloss. Wait, I figured out how to open it. Where's the pull tab? Aha! Uh -huh. You've tried the unicorn lip gloss? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Look, there's a unicorn at the top. It's so pretty. It smells like nail polish. This is the gloss. Very pretty shade. It's like a nude. And then another one of their blushes. I think this one's just a darker pink. Let's open it. tab these are so pretty I can't get over it Cupids, oh, it's just so pretty. One more eyeshadow palette I didn't open. The white one? Let's open it. Ow. Oh my 
that is so pretty. It's so pretty. Oh, what? This looks just like the... Isn't this just like the red one we just opened? Maybe it's just a little lighter brown, but... I feel like it's very similar. It's just all browns. Neutrals. Didn't we just open this? Eh, whatever. I'll probably do a giveaway with these two. Yeah, I feel like it looks very similar. Like, it looks exactly the same. Okay, anyway, we're done with that. Next! The headband is from Yes Style. Let me see if they still have it. I got it like a few years ago, so I don't know if it's still available, but yeah. Next we have NARS again. There's, they sent me their new lipsticks. I haven't tried these. I don't know how the formula is, if it's matte. I think it is matte. Should we try one? I don't want to put on too much lipstick though, because then my lips are going to get crusty. Let's try one. How do I open this? A few years ago, I started telling brands to send me stuff like in sustainable packaging, like, uh, like not too much, too many boxes, because it was getting ridiculous at one point when brands were like sending those those boxes with mini TVs in them that you have to throw away. Um, and I remember that like once there was this one brand that sent a huge box for one mascara. Like it was a big box, like, like this big and you opened it and it, it was just one tiny mascara inside. And it was because like they were competing for attention because influencers were taking pictures of like the most glamorous boxes. But I made it a point to not ever post those boxes because I didn't um, like those huge boxes because I didn't think that it was like necessary. And it created so much waste. Like I was throwing away so many boxes every single day. So um, yeah, so now I ask for them to send stuff in like uh, preferably small mailers like uh you know like those little envelopes the bubble wrap um but yeah still they use they still send stuff like this which is such a waste honestly because like this is so much plastic and it's like um like i'm not gonna keep my lipstick in this you know i appreciate it though like it looks cool but i think if you're doing a brand collab um that where you want like if we were doing a sponsorship together where they would want me to like do something cool like where i open it like this then it makes sense but if it's just like a a, a mailer then is this necessary you know and then i have to like peel off the sticker to try to open it how do i open this do i have to slide it Oh, slide open. Thing. Then, what shade should we try? I think maybe one of these darker shades. Another red, perhaps. This one. Uh, 
Um, this packaging is very confusing. I don't know how to do this, but we'll put it on the side for now. So this is the Power Matte Lipstick in Mogador. Looks like this. Swatch it. It's like the same exact shade as the one I was already wearing. But yes, it is matte. It's a classic matte lipstick. This is a pretty shade. I like deep reds like this. Oh my god, I've been streaming for two hours. Five, six, seven. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, I got a bunch of stuff from. I got a bunch of stuff from Oaken Fort. Um, oh. Which my favorite thing I got from them was the sweater I was wearing in the first stream. What is all the spam messages? Anyway, so I got um, this coat. Yeah, I tried to, it's it's cause my sister is supposed to be moderating, but I think she got bored and left. I got this coat, which I'm very excited to wear in Japan. Yeah, it's gonna be really cold when I go because it's gonna be February. So I'm excited to actually have seasons and be able to layer because, yeah. <laughs> It's quite long. I don't think you guys can tell, but yeah. I'm excited to layer and then I'll be able to wear a scarf and everything. A real winter, a real winter outfit since I never actually get to wear them. And then I got, oh, I got shoes from them too, but I didn't bring it into this room. Dang it. I got a bunch of Fenty Beauty stuff. So, full bodied foundation brush. Ooh, I've been wanting to try this, the, the All Over Glow Enhancer. P. 
pink pearl. And then I think they came out with skin tint. Yeah, blurring skin tint. I've been wanting to try that. Shade number two. And then they also sent their gloss balm heat. Fussy and heat. So like this is um if you guys have tried their gloss bombs, this is the the heat version is the plumping version. So yeah. And then L'Oreal also sent over some skincare. This is their Midnight Serum. And then I got some stuff from YesStyle. So I think this is just nail accessories. I'll show you guys tomorrow on stream. Yeah. Like I got some nail brushes. Nail brushes. And then um, sculpting gel. And then I also got from YesStyle these under lashes. I want to see if like they look they look natural, you know, because I have gotten under eye lashes before and they have all been terrible. So yeah, I think that's mostly it for that. I thought I got nail. Oh yeah, I did. I got nail gems. And then more, more lashes, more individual lashes. But yeah, I got these nail gems. They're actually glow in the dark. So we'll see, they're roses. You can't really see, but yeah. Roses and leaves. What a mess we've made. What a mess. I also got some lip pop stuff from YesStyle. So I got this skirt, this mini skirt. Cute, huh? I think it has shorts. Yeah. It's a skirt. It looks short, but it's like a regular length for me because if you're short, you un you'll understand. Like if your s mini skirts are too long, they make you look shorter. So this like will make my legs look longer. Don't worry. Um, should I keep opening stuff? I'll keep going. Like. I just need to reorganize this. Ah. Ah. I also have another box over there, which I got from YesStyle with wigs and stuff, but yeah. Alright, um, next we have ah the Dior collection. So Dior sent me their Miss Dior collection. I was talking about it yesterday. Um, So they sent over their rose bath bombs and the Miss Dior perfume. And yeah, this is the Miss Dior perfume. I love perfumes. It's my favorite gift to get. Mm, smells so good. Oh my God. It's like very fresh smelling, but you guys have probably smelled this before. It's like a classic scent. Did I break it? No. And then they sent 
get me a bath pearls. And then they also sent a candle, but it's downstairs right now because I already opened this actually. So yeah, the candle smells very good. It's like my favorite candle right now, but it's a mini. The Miss Dior collection would be a good gift too. If you adore her, Dior her, you know. Um, and then the rest of the stuff, oh wait, I want to show you guys this. Kaleidos sent me, remember, if you guys follow me on TikTok, I, um, Miss Dior or the Blooming Bouquet. Uh, I think it might be Blooming Bouquet. I'm not sure. Um, maybe I should look it up. Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet. Oh no, it's, it's Miss Dior, not the Blooming Bouquet. Yeah, it's the actual Miss Dior. Okay, next is the Kaleidos. Um, if you follow me on TikTok, I did an unboxing and like I, or like a try on of one of the highlighters and then it broke. Like the same exact day that I filmed that, I dropped it and it broke and I was so sad. And they saw that and so they're like, oh, let us send you the entire collection. So luckily well i ended up fixing it with rubbing alcohol but they sent me their their encyclopedia of kaleidos space age highlighters so this is all of them so pretty i really like this this one is the one that they sent to me it's super super shiny um and then they sent me all of the the other fun colors so they have like some pink ones some orange ones and these are all very shiny let me show you so this is the space age prophecy and then this is what it looks like i love this brand they're very like they're so high quality all of their products so this is you can tell from already one swatch and then let me show you how pigmented it is Ugh, it's like too bright but yeah it's like super pigmented and then you can rub it out and then it becomes like a sparkle dust yeah, their highlighters are really good if you like the super bright look. Let me grab the one, this, the one that I fixed, the one that I broke and fixed. Ah! I'm like, it's like a maze in here because of all the boxes. Um, okay, so this is the one that I broke and then I fixed. Let me see if the actual one has, so this is the new one. Let me see if it actually has um, an uh, engraving. It does, I messed up the engraving, whatever. This is the engraving that it's supposed to come with. Just don't drop it, because these, because they're like a very creamy formula, they will break very easily. But yeah, let me show you. I'm gonna do a swatch on my nose. You guys can see it's like very bright. You have to get it in the reflection of the light though. Let me do it on my eyes. You see? This has a, like a little bit of a pinkish sheen to it. But yeah, very pretty. It's like one of my favorite highlighters right now. Where did this come from? Um, and then I think those are my two favorite shades because the rest are a lot darker which would be good for people with darker skin tones. 
Um, they have like a yellow version, a pink version, a purple version. Let's get this one. I think this is orange. This is in Mars Melter. Yes, this is the orange one. This one is a little bit more glittery. It has those glitter chunks in it. But yeah, if you like those super blinding highlighters, you should look into the Kleidos ones. And then I'm not sure if they sell this encyclopedia set, but if they do, this would be a good gift. And then, um, I'm just gonna show you guys my wigs and then we'll be done with this. Or should I do the wigs? I don't know. Let me go grab them. I am wearing foundation right now is the Lancome Tan Idol Ultra Wear Karen Glow one that I was talking about yesterday and I mix it with my Too Faced one. So I got a bunch of wigs from YesStyle. This was when I was trying to order stuff for Halloween and then it just arrived late. So this is a burgundy wig. If you guys are looking into wigs from YesStyle, make sure to look at the reviews because some of them can be shiny and you don't want that. And I also like getting the ones with bangs so I don't have to like worry about making it blend. Should I put it on? I've been thinking of getting Hime things recently. These on the side. I feel like they're so cute. Anyway. This is wig number one. This is when I was thinking of dyeing my hair red, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't think it suits me. Maybe it's because of the red lipstick. It's too much red. Kind of looks good without the red lipstick. All right, next. Bring the next wig. This one. Ah, this one's the half black, half pink one. Am I just dumb? Where's the opening? I don't know guys, cause like the thing is for me, I have a phase of wanting to dye my hair every single month, but then by the end of the month, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad I didn't dye my hair cause I like black hair the best. I don't know. I don't know, but I've been thinking about bleaching my hair completely white recently. Actually, not recently. I've been wanting to bleach my hair white for the longest time. It's just, I'm scared of like having to deal with ugly roots when I'm not getting my hair done. So. This one's like, oh, it looks different from one I remembered. Ah! 
Where's the top? So this is the front. What am I do- oh. I'm doing something wrong here. I don't know my directions. Let me just get a mirror. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, this one looks terrible. Um, what is this? I just look like a K-pop reject. What? This is so bad. Let me actually remove this lipstick because I feel like it's messing with the the colors. What is going on here? The color. Yeah, no, that's embarrassing. That's just embarrassing. Um. Okay, next. Bring the next wig. Wait, this. Okay. This, I'm a little scared about. Um, it's a completely silver one. I don't know if this is gonna look good on me, but we'll try it. Wait, is the, okay, so I originally got this for a cosplay for, um, for Halloween, and then it didn't arrive in time. So yeah, I thought this was gonna be a little bit more blue though, so. But I was gonna try to be that girl from High school, what is it? High Rise Invasion. High Rise Invasion, the one that's with the sniper mask. This one's super long. I think this one's gonna look bad, I'm not gonna lie. Wait, I did it wrong. I think this one's actually gonna be terrible. Um, what is going on here? Like her bangs are irregularly long. No? It, does she have a middle part? Maybe we'll try it with a middle part. Yeah, yeah, that's embarrassing. This is embarrassing. I don't know why I'm embarrassing myself like this online. This is so bad. I need to take off this lipstick. <laughs> look how long this hair is. Oh my God, I look scary. I look like a ghost. Remover. I look scary, do I not? I feel like, like I look like an old lady. Okay, it looks better without the red lipstick. But see, I don't want to limit my, my lipstick options if I dye my hair. Like with black hair, it's so easy because then I can just wear any lip color I want. But then with different hair colors, it clashes so much. Are you guys into this? Would I look good with silver? Silver hair? Oh my God, it's shedding. Should I enter my silver hair era? Ah! My Khaleesi era. I kinda like it. Mm -hmm. 
See, the thing is though, I kind of like how silver hair looks with dark eyebrows. I feel like it looks so striking, like um, those Lord of the Rings uh, elves. <laughs> Inuyasha. Okay, next. This one's really long. Oh, look how long it is. Can you see that? Why am I doing this? Okay. This one's kind of shiny for a yes style wig. Usually they're better. They're usually they're not as shiny. Bring out the next wig. Is this another red one? I was really going through a, a red phase, but. Let's look at it. I have so much cleanup to do after this unboxing. There's literally trash all over the floor. Oh, this is a lighter red. So like what you guys were saying. Um, I think I originally got this for the May, the May Lee, May Lin turning red cosplay. Um, but I couldn't get a short one because my hair's long. So um, I don't like getting short wigs. I don't know why. This one's actually pretty long too. I don't think this color looks good on me. Or maybe it's the the bangs. Maybe I just don't like how bangs look on me. Ah! That's worse. convinced anybody saying this looks good is just sabotaging me because I I feel like this looks terrible on me like this color can't see out of these things not look good I don't know is it like ah it got in my eyeball what if I did those super short micro bangs <laughs> yeah I never want to see that ever again um I feel like this makes me look pale, like paler. Maybe this, but shorter? No, I don't like it. I think like for certain looks maybe, but every day, not for me. Bring out the final wig. There's one more wig. And it's a black wig. Oh, this must just be a really long one. Or maybe it's just bangs. Oh no, it's dark brown. I think this is like a natural type of wig. It's a little lighter than my natural hair color. This is just um, a long wig. I think it was for like a, a costume for Halloween.
I do think at the end of the day, black hair suits me best. But maybe I should do like an ash brown. I should have gotten an ash brown wig. What's the consensus, guys? Black hair. I think black hair. Yeah. Black or silver. I kind of liked the silver too. Even though I looked like a ghost. I think the silver with the dark brows is kind of a sleigh. Let's see. Ah. What if we did half of the head? Here. I'm unsure. It's either black or silver. My hair is naturally straight. Uh, I don't like how the front highlights look though because I feel like they make your forehead look bigger like Like balding You know cuz hair can hair can really contour your face and so those like silver highlights and stuff I feel like they They do the opposite of contouring your face But also I'm just very um I Really fixate like I focus a lot on colors and like the effect of colors so maybe it's just me that thinks that or notices it. Back to natural Jesse. been quite the journey here today we gave people unsolicited or actually it was solicited um, we gave people free Virgo advice I hope it was good advice free Virgo INTJ advice um, we did a huge PR unboxing and now I made a mess of my room we decided that after all of that I'm not dying my hair and um, and we're gonna do a giveaway Let's do a giveaway. Okay. Um, what, how, how should we do this? Let's do another journal prompt. For whoever's left here. I'm gonna take out a card and then we'll answer in the chat and then whoever wins, will I'll have them DM me. Oh, not this one. What does self-love mean to me? What does it not mean to me? Get specific. Okay, so you guys can just comment it in the comments and then I'll just pick a random one and then we will, um, I'll have, I'll ask you to DM me on Instagram and then we'll arrange the giveaway. So what does self-love mean to me and what does it not mean to me? Oh wait, I need to put my headband back on. Thanks, Young. I'll give you guys an example if you're having a hard time. So self-love to me means holding yourself accountable while also being uh, gentle with yourself. So having the respect for yourself to keep yourself in check, but also being gentle enough where you're not beating yourself over small mistakes 
And then what does it not mean to you is, yeah, not beating yourself over small, beating yourself up over small mistakes. Like, I think self-love for me is a lot, is really tied to self-respect. So holding yourself to a high standard, but not being too um, strict about it, like super annoying and like hating yourself for not doing things right all the time. Okay, I'm gonna pick a winner now. Um, let's do, I saw an answer I liked. Oops. Ah, it's going so fast, oh, hold on. Yeah, um, Boba 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 is the winner. Uh, Self-love is about accepting your flaws and working on it if you choose to. What it doesn't mean is just seeing you are flawed. I like the answer. Okay, so Boba Boba Boba, please DM me on Instagram. Um, nobody else, please pretend to be Boba Boba Boba. I'll know. Okay, thanks for joining the stream today, guys. It's been a great journey here today together. And there will be surprise giveaways sprinkled in on all these live streams. So if you didn't win, it's it's okay. You'll have plenty of opportunities. I feel like it's really easy to win. Like if you join almost all of the live streams, you're probably gonna win something. So yeah. Thank you. Bye guys. See you tomorrow or after tomorrow. I don't know. I might need a break because I have a deadline due tomorrow. So, bye.